So, ladies and gentlemen, already this morning, one of our speakers mentioned that there is going to be a lecture about DDP, about digital data package. And actually, we have a ProStep iWorb working group for that. And I'm really happy that all three gentlemen are joining me here in Stuttgart today. Please welcome Dr. Momus Stürken from Scheffler Technologies. He is the leader of the DDP working group. We we also welcome Thorsten Schmidt from the ProStep AG. He is the administrator of the working group. And finally, Michael Kirsch from EM Engineering Methods. He is the technical lead of the DDP working group. Now, gentlemen, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, welcome to um, our lecture about the digital data package. Uh, I think in the last two days, we um, heard a lot about the worst quantity of data in the uh, area of digital transformation. And we also heard a lot of um, uh, the digital threat, um, because when we have the availability of uh, all these data, uh, it's clear that it would be increase the whole um, quality and effectivity um, of decision and design processes. And uh, we heard a lot of um, approaches um, which concentrates more or less on, on inside uh, digital threat, which is also very difficult, as I know. Uh, but when we come to cross company, to cross company digital threat, this is a great challenge of today. And this is why we had the idea to create such a digital data package. Um, as to the agenda, um, at first I will give you a short introduction, and then Thorsten uh, will pr present some very interesting specifics uh, of our project collaboration and organization. Uh, after that, we come to the proper focus of, of the speech. Um, the technical aspects, the architecture, the implementations, and also the demonstration of the digital data package. And then uh, we uh, also want to conclude uh, with a short outlook. So let's come to the introduction. Um, the digital data package consists, uh, it's a consortium project um, of uh, 15 participants. And as you can see, this is wide dispersed from uh, from OEMs, from suppliers, from vendors, from consulting areas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we all have the same target. And the target is that we want to support cross-company and cross-domain collaboration during the whole product lifecycle for systems engineering based on linked MBSE standards. This is our mission. And why is this so important? Because today we have a lot of um, um, standards at the ProStep EWIP, um, which can support uh, the data exchange for single disciplines. For example, I can exchange demands uh, with the WEC IF, mechanics with ProStep GT, architectures with SysML, et cetera, et cetera. But the interdisciplinary links, the whole system description, this falls by the wayside today. And uh, the digital data package addresses this lack of communication. Um, yeah, on the next uh, slide, you see um, a vivid depiction of the situation. No, on the left side, we see the situation of today with all the um, standards no, which can uh, support the, the exchange of single disciplines. But what we want to do is we want to put all the standards into a packet, connect it with the interdisciplinary links, provide it with a content overview so that you can see uh, on, at a glance, which is in the packet, and uses for the communication between companies. Um, yeah, uh, as you can see here, the idea is that we can use it across the whole V model, which is clear that we have to uh, uh, involve a, a lot of relevant standards into the package on the one side. And on the other side, we can use it uh, several ways, uh, several um, uh, stages uh, of the product lifecycle. Um, with different content. No? At the beginning, maybe only for demands and architectures, then for the single disciplines, then the right side of the VV model. So the content of the package will enhance during the life cycle. Um, and uh, at Scheffler, we have discussed this. Uh, of course, to be honest, uh, at Scheffler, the idea is um, mostly interesting for uh, our complex uh, products like uh, roller stabilizers, Industry for Zero products, UniAir with all its mechatonical elements, etc. But uh, we have also uh, inspected that for, even for a single bearing, like uh, on this slide here, it is interesting um, with ideas of the RFLP to connect several disciplines and so also here 
the digital data package can be a good uh, usage product. Okay, so far to the basic ideas. Now let's take a little look uh, how we achieved this digital data package, how we have gone to the way to this. It started two years ago. Uh, at the beginning, we dedicated ourselves to, um, yeah, to an intensive uh, uh, analysis of the as-is situation, of the to-be situation, of the boundaries, and uh, of all participants. Now, what is the situation at the beginning? And there, uh, we um, also um, developed uh, uh, important uh, use cases and uh, the epics, etc. cetera. Uh, after this, we applied a reference process for the communication. Then we go to the data side no, and uh, took all this uh, uh, relevant data standards, analyzed it with the contents, with the overlapping. And by this, we created um, a data model. Um, then in the next step, we, we come to the functional concept with the architecture and so on. And then we were able to build the first demonstrators. And in this phase, it was uh, also interesting um, that we said, uh, let us exchange with other groups of the ProStep um, and uh, say what, what, uh, and discuss what they say to, to uh, our ideas here. And uh, this is, of course, no, that we get a lot of findings uh, which flow back no, to our digital data package, go more into details, De developed some other use cases, talked about the linking technologies with all the other post app groups, and then we were able to build up a demonstrator, and that's the way where we are today. Um, yeah, um, and as to the orientation, um, what we have done in our development, this were two important aspects. On the one hand, we took the interview results of our participants. On the other hand, we have orientation uh, on uh, the relevant organizations, the national bodies, uh, on the one hand, the uh, strategy board uh, standards from uh, post at EWIP, VDR on the other side, and these two aspects lead us you know, to our orientation for our digital data package. Okay, so far to the basic ideas and the way, and now I want to hand over to Thorsten, who will present us some interesting aspects of the workflow in our project. Yeah, thank you, Mama, for this uh, great introduction. So i like to tell you a little bit more how we organize this work group and uh, which makes this uh, working group in our eyes so successful. Um, we have, uh, from the organization point of view, we have one team. Uh, so the normal way under the roof of the ProSIP IWEB Association is that uh, you have uh, the workflow forum and the implementer forum in separate groups. We decide at the beginning of uh, um, our working group to have all the people on one table. Uh, this, is, uh, this makes this much quicker. We have direct decisions and um, we, can, we have direct uh, also the feedback from the vendors. We have an agile approach. This is also new. So we are the first working group where we really work agile. Uh, we have uh, one month uh, sprints with a meeting at the end of the month. In addition, we have three times a year this, uh, three uh, full-day workshops um, yeah, online or hopefully in future face-to-face -face again. Supported um, is a working group by the equipment from the ProStep IWIP Association. So we use the Jira for our Scrum uh, planning, for Scrum board, the Global X tool to have the documents available. And uh, also we use the ProStep IWIP intranet um, to share our uh, documentations. In addition, we have regular updates with, uh, other, uh, with other groups with, um, working on uh, other standards like JT, RECAF, SysML, and so on, um, with a uh, yeah, regular exchange of information. This makes us, in our opinion, so successful. Here you can see it's sort of a picture from the last meeting, the first kickoff with the other working groups at uh, the last time at a table face to face. And um, yeah, so meanwhile, we have uh, a lot of collaboration meeting done and plan also to have a lot of collaboration meetings in future. And also we are planning uh, some kind of a JT day, uh, perhaps at the end of the year together with the other working groups. Um, how do we uh, plan our agile approach? So we have a monthly task planning. We have a dedicated responsible for each task. We perform the task and uh, we document the results. And at the end of the uh, month with our um, group 
meeting, um, we discuss the results and um, best case, we close then the task and the sprint is closed. Uh, we are often asked, uh, so what is the difference between the DDP and the Integrated Collaboration Framework Working Group, the ACF? So uh, overall, it's a high level is this. So we are looking for asynchronous collaboration data exchange with linked data. And the ICF is more on an internal synchronous data collaboration inside the companies and a little bit also in scope now to, to external to share on a, something a cloud based. So how did we um, come now to the result? Um, so at, um, we have uh, the, the, the use cases, we have a lot of formats which, um, um, which came uh, in, in scope to, to fulfill our requirements. And based on the questionnaire you see on the button of this slide, um, with, uh, they uh, prioritize the technical requirements, we come to the result that an own DDP XML and for our data dictionary model and for the presentation format, we choose HTML5 uh, um, the, as the best uh, formats to fulfill our requirements. How this will work now uh, and how, what you can expect in future, this will be shown now by Michael. Great. So, thank you very much, Thorsten. Um, let's have a look at how the DDP looks in practice. So, this is the next slide is the architecture of the dig digital data package. It all starts at the bottom with a lot of authoring systems from all of the domains involved in the product lifecycle. Uh, and um, our workgroup members really stressed all of them, all of the use cases. We cannot only hide away in, in systems engineering. We also have shop floor work uh, use cases. We have inspection use cases. So we have the, the whole bandwidth of the product lifecycle uh, in our zoo of, of use cases. Um, and from there, uh, a lot of proprietary documents or even databases arise. And thanks to the standardization work by ProStep IVIP and other bodies of standardization like VDA, ISO and so on, um, we can converge all of these proprietary formats to just a few um, standard documents that we can really handle in this work group. Um, and uh, much like our 12-year-older sister, the American um, military standard uh, technical data package, uh, we also gather documents. And uh, also our six-year-older brother, uh, the ZLP container from the German VDA. Uh, that's what we have in common with those uh, older siblings, um, the thing that we do differently is that we focus on content and not on documents. And how do we do that? We first get all of the content out of these documents, that the content that we need to link, um, and from there we do everything else. From there we, we create the links inside uh, each part, each format, uh, and also the links across the formats. And this allows us to present the top layer, the presentation layer, what we call the uh, the DDP, the, the content overview, in which we can present uh, 3D geometry, but far beyond systems engineering uh, content like uh, use cases, functions, product, uh, testing cases, and so on, uh, even source code. So this is the, the presentation uh, layer that we can uh, deal with. Um, so um, let's, let's go to the next slide, Torsten, thank you. Uh, so how do you sort out the content from uh, about 40 standards that have been handed over to us from the Standardization Strategy, strategy Board? Um, what we really need for the DDP is kind of a grid to sort it all in. And this is uh, what our functional data model is all about. And this is what you can see on this slide. This really covers the bandwidth of entities of objects that we cover in the DDP. Um, it is as wide as the use cases addressed in the DDP, but not deeper than we really need to address all the links that are inside. So let's have a look at how the DDP looks in practice, and maybe we can jump over to the video on the next slide. Um, so uh, on the top of the page, we find that content overview, the, the package information, metadata, um, and everything's linked. So if I think I need to, to uh, pop Mome an email, I can start to there right away from here. Um, then we find contents that come with the package and also content uh, which we add uh, in the collaboration on the package. Here we have the standards and from each standard we can jump to the specifying, uh, specifying documents. We've got a geometry view in this HTML5. 
uh, and at the, bo bot at the bottom, this is, this is really the, the interesting part of the DDP. This is all of the content mapped to our data package, uh, mapped to our data model in a very visual uh, and, and intuitive way. Here you find all the content harvested from the original uh, documents. This is one of them, so a Cameo uh, magic draw um, uh, model. And uh, let's have a look at this use case, uh, if we can find it in the digital data package. Um, we are searching for the name, uh, something with energy. Now here we find the use case, then we find the role attached to it. So this is what we have harvested from the, the source file. And now let's uh, add a comment to it uh, by just uh, popping a comment in this, uh, in this uh, text box, add it to the data package, and uh, instantly it appears on the top of the page. Um, and uh, it's not only a text, textual content, it's not only a table, but we can jump back from there, right? to the content on the bottom. So everything is, uh, knows where it is, everything knows what object it uh, refers to. Um, different content is needed for different purposes, and for that reason, we also pop all of the use cases that we know in the digital data package. Um, and from here, if I select a use case, uh, those entities uh, will pop up which are needed for this use case. So we have a mapping between collaboration intent and the content needed for it, which allows easy navigation for people. We also have a link to a collaboration thread. This is optional. And for example, in this case, uh, we use Microsoft Teams. Um, a live uh, stream opens up. Uh, and in this conversation, attached to this very digital data package, we can do communication. So here, this has been recorded a week ago. Um, Torsten is uh, logged in. I'm logged in. Uh, and now let's, let's discuss about the digital data package from here. So we have a question about uh, some geometry in it. Um, and uh, well, um, Mommy will pop in in a minute. Um, and from there, if we want to do deep collaboration, uh, we can jump into the files which are inside the digital data package and open them in the viewers or authoring systems right from there to, to be able to collaborate. Um, so in this case, uh, we have the mass rover. Um, it is in the digital data package, and we go beyond what is shown in the content overview. So we pop into JT to go uh, and discuss uh, the geometry and the details over there. So that's basically how the digital data package works. Um, and uh, what we wanted to stress is this is really the, um, this is available today. Uh, we all believe in the cloud, uh, but the cloud maybe is the future. There's some work to do, and the digital data package is available right away. So, Mama, let's talk about the future. Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, I think the presentation and the demonstration, they show two important upshots. On the one hand, the traceability that can be provided by a digital data package, and on the other hand, uh, the communication it is possible. No? You can see all it, uh, the content at a glance. We have uh, very comfortable navigation uh, possibilities no? to handle with the contents, etc., etc. And now, um, in, within a short time, we will put it into practice. Um, the first use case is for uh, RVL and Daimler, who decided to test it uh, for simulation phases, for early design phases. And here we will see how it works. Besides this, um, the vendors um, uh, in our um, team um, with Arnak, uh, Elysium, um, also ProStep, um, they have a, um, a lot of uh, good ideas and uh, uh, researching projects at the moment. Um, and we will see, we were at a glance, how it works. So this leads us to the outlook. In future, yeah, we are on the home straight for the project. Uh, and uh, at the moment, um, we focus then uh, on the documentation, on the recommendation, because we want to put it into a standard, and on the other hand, to the collaboration with the other poster groups. Besides this, we have a lot of discussion at the moment uh, about the continuation and the presentation of the project. Um, I think we will, uh, in the next year, see um, um, we have to accompany the implementation, we have to follow up the best practices, and we also have a lot of, uh, of work um, uh, with uh, other relevant standards, other relevant use cases, we will see. Okay, thank you. And so we are open now and for the question. Gentlemen, thank you very much for that presentation. And of course, I received some questions from the audience. So let's jump directly to the Q&A. Marcus wants to know, is the ultimate goal of DDP to reuse components in order to build systems of systems across multiple partners? Um, so the idea is, 
uh, we, we build a package so it can be resolved in the target company. So it's built in one company, it's assembled to the package, and it gets resolved in the, in the company where it's received. So um, it, is, it is a system, so system of systems, but it's only for the time it's, uh, the data ex is exchanged. Okay, wonderful. Stanley wants to know, do you intend to consider the quality information framework in DDP? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. This, this is, of course, one of the, of the open works no, that I mentioned. <laughs> yeah, we, we know we have to do it. Uh, very good Still point. something ahead of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's for the whole validation and verification no, that we have to make a lot of inspections there. So, next question comes from uh, Thomas. From the presentation, it seems you can only handle the applications mentioned on your slides. How could I extend the DDP to also include data from uh, other arbitrary applications used inside a company? Mm. So, the, the key is uh, the standard documents that have been focused in the, in the SSB. So, uh, warm hello to Sebastian Hanschuh and Markus Grastel of the, the SSB working group. So, they give the framework uh, for what we are dealing with. So, once uh, a company can accommodate to these standards, uh, we can digest in it in our digital data package. Perfect. So I can see there are some more questions coming in right away, but unfortunately, time is limited. I see the red everywhere. <laughs> so we have to go to the next presentation. But of course, the gentlemen are going to answer all of your questions coming in later on on the platform. So once again, thank you very much to you.